This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in the new matchroom gym here. I'm joined by Mr. Ted Cheeseman. All right, mate? Yeah, all good, mate. You? Yeah. All good. I had a little sneak peek at your uh, Le Boot on boxing boots, which are uh, very interesting, but we know you like a Le Boot on. Yeah, yeah, no, they're nice. Um, I went in Selfridges, I was in there, and I see him, and Mrs. on me. She said, Look, your waistband and everything else, you might as well get them. I said, All right. Might as well get them. Got them. They were quite nice and they've had good feedback, so I think they could be the next fight boots. It's an interesting comment, isn't it? You waste money on everything else, so you might as well get them. <laughs> so that, that's a good enough, yeah, yeah, that's a good enough reason to get them. Yeah, and no, definitely. Um, I think she's just implying you buy tops, shoes, this, watch, this, that, and you might you waste it on other stuff for your boxing and never wanted to see it, you might as well get them. So she, she twisted my arm, really. Did she say you're wasting money when you buy stuff for her? No, never. <laughs> never. Like Coogan, I can't wait till she watches that video and read that, because that is 100% true. She never says that. She makes me right every time then. <laughs> yeah. You're bang on right there. Um, so, yeah, what is the situation regarding you, purse bids, et cetera, et cetera? Kind of give us a summary of what's going on with you at the moment, Ted. Um, obviously, at the uh, after the last fight, I come back and t sort of ticking over in camp. Thought that I would more than likely be on um, the fight camp, but then obviously we pushed for the fight that we pushed the um, um, purse bids for the Troy Williamson fight. So then that made it. So it like we had to wait for the purse bids before I could sort of ask be able to be able to fight before. And now uh, it looks like we'll just be waiting for the purse bids on July the 14th. And then hopefully have a date then, uh, September, October, that sort of time. Fingers crossed. So in an ideal situation, would you have liked to have had a fight before uh, a potential fight with Troy Williamson? Yeah, no, it would have been nice just to hopefully get another, like would have been nice to get another British title defence as a voluntary and then had a chance of winning it outright against Troy. Because likely after the Troy Williamson fight, as long as I come through successful, I'll be pushing on from British level. So is that the immediate goal for you for this year now, is to try and obtain that uh, British title outright? No, no, no. obviously now, now I've, um, we'll only be fighting Troy. Obviously now, that's sort of out of the equation. It's more than likely now that I'll, I'll just push on after that fight. So obviously, that's on paper, it, it's a great fight. We've seen some impressive win over the last couple of years from Troy Williamson, and I think... For the fans, that's that's a great fight between you and Troy. Yeah, yeah, no, Troy, Troy's a really good fighter. Looks like he's quite a big puncher or, on in his fights and stuff, and um, he's unbeaten. But I think when he gets took into deep waters against someone like me, who's had them tough fights and have the, had the experience, you're going to see how really good he is, and that's when you're going to find out how good Troy Williamson is on that night. We know, obviously, this is your kind of immediate plan for your, your next fight, but um, the name of Mr. Anthony Fowler will always pop up, I yeah. suppose, until you two finally fight. Yeah, obviously, um, it'd be nice now. He's been put for uh, um, an eliminator for the British title with Egerton. It'd be nice to see how he gets on with someone like Egerton if it happens, because I feel like... Other than Scott Fitzgerald, he ain't had a, a proper fight, do you know what I mean? So for everyone, obviously, for the fans and for, for the public, everyone wants to see it because we're both exciting fighters. But the different excitement is I'm doing it against tough, hard British unbeaten fighters. He's doing it against um, foreign fighters that have had a couple of defeats and probably coming over for a payday, really. So it's different, do you know what I mean? Let him have a proper fight, see how really good he is. See if he can come through successful from this one, and then maybe the fight will happen. Is that a conversation like either you've had with Eddie or Tony's had with Eddie about that being? I mean, we're at the middle part of 2021 now, so I suppose your immediate focus will be on what happens with with Troy Williamson. But has there been actual serious discussion about getting that fight on at some stage? I don't know. I think I think Tony and Eddie have had discussions, but. I'm not too in the loop with it, Tony, because the thing is, with Tony, he knows with me, <laughs> I, want, I fight anyone and I, I want to fight. So, sort of, he sort of 
keeps me out of the loop a bit to try and make it so he's making the right decisions for me and I'm not pushing for things that he don't want to be done at the time. Do you know what I mean? So obviously, like you say, eventually the fight's more than likely going to happen as long as we both keep staying on, on, on a winning route. The fight will happen eventually and then we'll see who's, who the better man is on the night. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of them fights there we're talking about, again, you and Williamson, you and Fowler, they're all great fights, and there's not too much reason why these fights can't get yeah. made. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, all these fights are going to happen, and, and what you don't realise is, I know there's fights that, I, all these fighters that I'm saying, have turned down, they're, they're, they're talking and I want to fight them, and, but they've turned big fights down, and made that, that they're not ready at the moment, and they're not this, and... Listen, everyone can force for what they want, but things happen at right, right, the right things happen at the right time. And if you let your coach do that for you, you'll be successful. You know what I mean? But if you push for things when you don't need it, and, and, and when your coach don't think it's right at that time, you're gonna you'll end up having a hiccup. And I've had my hiccups by by forcing fights that I didn't need to take when I was fight, when I fought Sergio Garcia. I could have had a voluntary British offence. Maybe I would have still wouldn't have been in a bad head place, but I would have probably got through it and won on a bad performance even. But I, I, I managed to um, get, through, uh, get through that fight, um, come clean to Tony and move on. And I had, an, I had hiccups after that and I still pushed on. And now I'm in a position where I probably my last fight is my best performance as a pro. I'm improving leaps and that bands. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting faster. I'm getting more mature all round. And I just think, as long as I let Tony make my decisions and don't force it how I did earlier on in my career, um, I'll be successful. I heard you say only just before this interview started that you feel at times as though you don't get the credit that you yeah. deserve. Looking at your opponent list. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you look at my resume. For anyone to ever say Ted won't take a fight or Ted won't do this, just look at who I've fought since my seventh fight as a pro. Not not just my from 15 fights onwards or whatever. From uh, from my seventh fight, I was fighting fighters with 14 and one records. English, I won my English title in my ninth fight. I mean British title against this Sydney Bifo who no one wanted to, to fight at the time. Do you know what I mean? I, I I've took risk after risk. So sometimes, every now and then, even though Troy Williamson ain't a gimme. It would be nice to have a gimme, do you know what I mean? But again, I'm taking on another unbeaten fight, my mandatory um, defence. And then from then, hopefully, I'll push on and move to the next level. Looking at like Kermit Lavandra and Dylan Shara, I think I'm meant to be fighting for the vacant European title. It'd be nice to get the winner of that if I, if I beat uh, Troy Williamson. And then I'm there, like now, I'm already fifth with the IBF. When you come in this sport, your every kid's dream is to be a world champion. You don't think about the Olympic Games when you're 12 year old until you've been in the amateur game four or five years and realise what it's all about. You want to be a world champion, and whatever pushes me closer to having that goal, of having a shot at a world title, that's what I want to do. Well, keep us updated on on that situation. Obviously. Well, Everyone will keep an eye on the, the Persby situation, which yeah. is on the, the 14th of July. We'll see how that pans out. And then, yeah, um, still, like I said, there's so many fights yeah. that can be made, I think. When you look at kind of just the domestic scene, there's loads. And yeah. what happens after that for you? You're right. If you Once you've kind of got past that stage, then you need to be looking up at that kind of, yeah, European kind of level. Yeah, definitely. Um, the thing is, I, I've had a lot of hard fights at, at, at British level and good fighters at British level. And also I had my shot at, at the European title, weren't ready. Now I know what you need to do and, and what you need, to, how you need to be to be able to win that European title. And I've got one more hurdle in front of me of beating Troy Williamson. And hopefully I'll get my shot again. Okay, well, Mr. Cheeseman, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And uh, we'll definitely catch up with you again soon when you have uh, more fight news and um, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, all right, sweet, cool. Cheers, mate.